call this meeting of the Brockton School Committee to order and ask you to please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So we normally open each meeting with hearing of visitors, an opportunity for the public to come in and speak directly to the school committee and the superintendent and I. Uh, we did not have any visitors uh, sign in requesting the opportunity to speak tonight. So we'll move right on to the agenda. We have a, a very unique agenda tonight. Uh, this is what's referred to as the organizational meeting as uh, the school committee and I were just sworn into our new terms yesterday under the city charter. Both the city council and the school committee have to reorganize for the next two year term uh, with the new school committee. A little easier in this case because we have the same seven members of the committee returning as in the past. Um, but we'll go through a number of items of business here that are really fairly routine but we're required to, to go through these to kick off our new legislative term. So first we'll start off with election of the secretary. So that is usually the superintendent of schools, but we do have to have the school committee select and nominate and uh, vote for a secretary. So I'll accept a nomination. Um, I make a motion to nominate Superintendent Kathleen A. Smith as the secretary to the school committee. Sounds like an excellent suggestion. Do we have a second? second. Motion's been made and properly seconded to, uh, to name the superintendent of schools, Kathleen Smith, as the secretary of the school committee. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Yeah. Looks like you're sticking around for a couple more years. Uh, next up. Oh. Do we have the plaque? Yeah. This has become somewhat of an annual ritual now. We... Uh, I gotta see how many years you're on this thing for, Tom. Wow. So at this time, uh, the committee uh, recognizes the outgoing vice chair. So the vice chair of the school committee is kind of in essence the chair of the school committee. The mayor sits as the chair and I run the regular twice a month school committee meetings but in terms of the day-to-day -day operation of the school committee and communication and several of the subcommittees, the vice chair sits as the chair. So it's a really uh, important position uh, for the school committee. And I think particularly in terms, superintendent, of the school committee's communication with you, that the vice chair really fills that critical role of turning seven voices into one in order to be able to communicate effectively with the superintendent. Not that you don't return other folks' phone calls, but that um, but it, 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 that's a big part of the role of the vice chair is to be able to communicate on behalf of the, the committee as a whole. So um, apparently uh, last year for the eighth consecutive year, uh, Mr. Minicello served as the vice chair of the school committee. And so at this time, uh, we'd like to present him with a plaque, thanking him and recognizing him for his service. So Tom, if you would come up and get this. I'll take the mic off. Well, Mayor, you make a good point when you talk about, uh, first of all, you know, congratulations to all our school committee members for returning. It's a very hardworking group. Um, you know, Tom has been at the helm. I think he helps many of us with having been around for a lot of years, you know, understand kind of the history or where we're going or even our thought process. So I thank him for all his hard work on behalf of all of us that allow us to be uh, an extra special functioning school committee who has really dealt with some very, very difficult issues, you know, certainly the past five years I've been here. So thank you on behalf of all of us for, I know the time and efforts and I know the commitment that you have given. I know the time away from your family, which is what happens to all of you, certainly. So thank you on behalf of all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to serve with everyone on this committee. Um, uh, being, you know, your vice 
Vice Chair uh, for the past, well, this committee for the past year. Um, but uh, you know, for eight years is uh, something that I really feel privileged to have done. Um, so I really um, thank all of you because I think that you are a wonderful committee. I think that, you know, we've always said we don't always agree, but we respectfully disagree when we disagree. And, you know, we, uh, you know, voice our opinions about certain things. and. Um, been a pleasure, and uh, you know, I respect every one of you. All right, thank you, John. Thank you very much. So I think for the policy subcommittee, we should probably start discussing term limits for the vice chair. <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah, he, he, he'll be the one that suggests it, yeah. Is it really eight years, Tom? Yeah. So you, you, were, so you became vice chair the year that first year I came on the school committee? Ten? Correct. Yeah, Sully, you and I came in together that year. Yeah. Wow. So we've got quite a bit of history. Don't it's we? a long time, huh? Yes, yes, we have some history. It's a long time. Lots of different issues. Yeah. But Could offer about? a book? Seriously, Tom does a great job, and there's a reason why the committees uh, keep asking him to serve in that role. But, but I think it's a school system that we're all proud of, and we're all, you know, basically a small piece of, and should be proud that we uh, you know, love the city and we love, you know, the schools. And you know, like I've always said, if you put the kids first, you don't really get yourself in trouble. You know, that's what you need to do: put the kids first. So. You'll have to sit down and figure out sometime how many different people you've served with during eight years as vice chair. So it's got to be three superintendents, two mayors, and however many colleagues on the school committee, a few have come and <coughs> gone. Yeah, well, we'll sit down. We'll, we'll debate that later, Tom, after the <laughs> All right. So, Tom, thank you very much uh, for your service as vice chair. And so at this point, we now uh, need the school committee to elect a new vice chair for the uh, upcoming year. And uh, I'll accept a nomination, Mr. Sullivan. I'd like to make a motion that Tom Minicello be vice chair for the upcoming 2018 year. Okay. Motion has been made. Second by Mr. <coughs> D'Agostino. All in favor? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Mr. Minicello is unanimously elected to serve a ninth year as vice chair. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Just so folks may not realize, but the year Tim and I came on in 2010, prior to Tom serving the last nine years, typically it was a different vice chair every year. It was usually handed off from member to member to member each year, and it's it's really a unique situation that the same member would be consistently re-elected every year. So Tom, it's really a tribute to the great job that you do. When Ben and I raised things up, he's been on for 20 years. Yeah. Should I say, well, I've been vice chair for Vice nine. chair, this is my ninth I don't consecutive that, year as vice yeah. chair. So I guess. How many years were you vice quality chair? Quality yeah. as opposed to <laughs> quantity. <laughs> that's right, you are the dean of the school committee. Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Our next piece of organizational business is the election of committee members to the Community Schools Advisory Board. And off the top of my head, I think we select two of those, and we do. So uh, we will accept nominations for two members to uh, serve on the Community School Advisory Board, a board that's very near and dear to the superintendent's heart. Ms. Plant. I nominate Tom Minicello. Tom, oh boy, oh boy. Get this thing railroaded. All right, Mr. Minicello has been nominated. Any other nominations? We need two. Tom? I nominate Lisa Plant. There we go. It seems only fair. Yeah. Um, any other nominations before I close nominations? If someone has a dying desire to be on <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Tom's willing to relinquish his nomination if someone else really wants but, it. Oh, would you like to be on it? Would you like to be on it? Okay. I think Tom will be happy. Okay. Uh, let me ask Ms. Plant. Would you prefer to be on it or not to be on it? Um, I did tell them I'd come on for another. They did ask the last me if I'd be willing to do okay. it in another year. And, and I certainly would. 
So, Tom, you'll defer to Mrs. Sullivan? I will defer to Ms. Mrs. Sullivan, absolutely. Okay. So, uh, the nominees now, um, so Ms. Plant, just to make it official, I'll ask you to withdraw your nomination of Mr. Minicello. Okay, I withdraw my nomination. Okay. And now we need someone to nominate Judy. I will nominate okay. Judy okay. Sullivan. All right. So, now we have two candidates uh, on the table, Ms. Plant and Mrs. Sullivan. Uh, to serve as the school committee representatives to the <coughs> Community Schools Advisory Board. All in favor? Opposed? Great. Congratulations. You're on. Hey, Mr. Mayor, can I say um, <laughs> Director uh, Laurie Silver is here this evening, um, and one of the things I know is it does make a difference when community members come on board, share their ideas. It really is what allows us to move forward as a community. I know times have changed. We're looking at new ways to advertise. You know, it's, it's, I mean, we know the change is taking place every year. So I am going to be sitting down with uh, Director Silva and you know, starting to talk about ways that we can encourage people you know, to come to meetings, to get representation from every school, and to talk about uh, kind of an action plan as to some of the things that we want to address. So um, I look forward to attending a couple, in, a couple of those meetings. I think it's been enough time. I felt I needed to you know, stick to this business for a while, but I also um, plan to attend uh, a number of those meetings this year. Awesome, so I look forward that's great. To that. So our next piece of business is approval of the rules and orders of the school committee. I think the proposed remain essentially unchanged and all the members of the committee have received copies of those in advance. So barring anyone wanting to offer a, a last minute amendment here, we could accept a motion to adopt uh, the rules rules and orders of the school committee as have been presented and distributed to the members of the committee in advance. I did have a question, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, but you may have just answered it. I just don't recall, I guess, from two years ago. This, these, rules, um, this is, these rules have not changed? Is well, that correct? Tom, you have to help me with this one. I don't believe there was any changes, okay. were there? Okay. okay. Go ahead. I will recognize Wanda. Um, at the back, the policy is, is the new policy that was approved by the school committee on December 7th. Essentially the same as that right. policy. The, the language changed like that. Right. The purpose and the intent has not changed. Okay. okay. So there was a slight change in language that was already approved by the school committee during the past year. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other questions before we go forward to a vote? All right, then I'll accept a motion on the rules and orders of the Brockton School Committee. Motion to approve rules and orders of the Brockton School Committee. All right, motion's been made. Got a second anywhere, Mr. Sullivan, okay. All in favor? Opposed? Those are adopted unanimously. We're almost done here, folks. So uh, now appointments of subcommittees for 2018 and Technically, uh, these are my appointments, subject to your approval, but I will tell you that um, I have proposed these exactly as suggested by the vice chair and the superintendent. So I think everyone's had a chance to look at it. There's been, Tom, a couple minor changes, were there? Or? Yeah, some minor changes. Yeah. There's been some adjustments. Um, to accommodate some of the members in terms of their schedules. Um, yeah. So we've tried to even things out a little bit, um, especially when it came to um, negotiations of the non-certified. Um, instead of having <clears throat> a couple of the members on every single uh, bargaining unit, we've divided it between a couple of the members so that one has three, one has two instead yeah. of five. So. Yeah. And it is a little bit of a unique situation. We have the exact same seven members returning, so it makes it a little easier on the committee assignments. Everybody has served previously on a variety. I, I, I should mention for the purpose of the public, we have a whole, we have two pages full of these subcommittees. School committee members serve on multiple subcommittees. In addition to the fact that we have a couple subcommittees of the whole, finance and uh, policy. Are there any sub other subcommittees of the whole time? Finance, policy, curriculum, superintendent, superintendent's contract, curriculum, curriculum, 
So those are subcommittees of the whole, but there's a whole range of other subcommittees, everything from transportation to reviewing expenditures to collective bargaining. And really, the real heavy lifting of the school committee members is you, you don't see here on the Tuesday meetings. It's, it's done um, with a lot of extra effort put in on their own time. And you know a lot of what happens during the televised meetings is the result of a lot of work that's done uh, behind the scenes by the subcommittee. So um, appreciate all of the hours that all the school committee members put in on their subcommittee work. And everyone's had a chance to review the subcommittee assignments. Is uh, any discussion on subcommittee assignments? Uh, Everybody okay? Tom? Just that um, you know, even if you're not on a particular subcommittee, a school committee member certainly can attend and um, yeah, offer suggestions and uh, comment and you know, voice concerns. And um, their work goes, ends up going back to the entire school committee, who right. then compares, contrasts, um, amends, et cetera, and um, you know, votes as a whole. So even though you might, may not be on a particular subcommittee, you certainly have ample opportunity for input. Especially a lot of us like to attend the um, safety, transportation, um, and uh, security subcommittee. That's one that all of us yep. um, feel strongly about. And on that one, uh, Mr. Sullivan is the chair. Uh, Mr. Gormley and Ms. Azak are on there. But um, many of us have attended those subcommittee meetings because it basically um, you know, deals with all issues um, to all school committee members with regard to their wards. So. Um, you know, that being yeah. said. No, point well taken. And it's school committee members routinely at, um, attend subcommittee meetings that they may not be a member of the subcommittee, but they have an interest in a piece of business that's in front of the subcommittee, and everybody participates. The members vote, but everybody participates. All right, so now that we've covered all that, uh, how about a motion on subcommittee assignments as presented in the enclosure in tonight's packet? To accept the appointments of the subcommittee for 2018, as okay. proposed. <clears throat> Motion's made. Got a second? Second. Ms. Plant, okay. Motion's been made, properly seconded for the subcommittee assignments as presented. All in favor? Opposed? Those are approved unanimously. All right, so that's it for the organizational business. May I have a question? Sure, of course you can. Well, um, you know, when, when I thanked everybody for, you know, electing the superintendent as secretary, I do want to say that our meetings run as smoothly as they do because of your executive assistant to the school committee, Wanda Elms. Absolutely. Who puts together all kinds of things, make sure that we're on the same page, our policy, I mean, our subcommittee meetings, uh, so many things that happen behind the scenes. I know she's available to each and every one of you at all times, so I want to thank her for that hard work that certainly allows me to do my job and hopefully yeah. allows you to do your jobs a little bit better. So thank you, Wanda. Yeah, absolutely, thank you, Wanda. Wanda does a great job also in all the communication between meetings. It's a lot of us all going in different directions and on behalf of the superintendent, she's able to communicate with all the members of the committee, including myself. So we appreciate that, Wanda. Thank you. About time the superintendent stopped taking credit for all your good work. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so. <laughs> That's true, so, Mr. Yeah, Mayor. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Um, so, consent agenda. So, the consent agenda is a block of uh, fairly routine business uh, that is uh, voted upon as one block to keep the meeting moving along. However, uh, any member of the committee may request that any item from the consent agenda be removed for individual um, discussion and deliberation. So. At this time, uh, would any members of the committee like to separate any of the items on tonight's consent agenda? Mr. D'Agostino. Item C, please. C. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, so hearing no one else, we'll entertain a motion on adoption of the consent agenda minus item C. The consent agenda minus item C, including A, B, D, E, F, and G, as, okay. as proposed. Do 
Do I have a second? Second. Ms. Sullivan, okay. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, consent agenda is accepted and uh, <coughs> Mr. D'Agostino, we will recognize you now on uh, agenda item C. Okay, just quickly, wanted to thank Ms. Asak and Ms. Plant for their work on that subcommittee with me. We put a lot of hours and hours worth of time into researching a lot of different things and um, um, I know uh, Ms. Asak has got a different assignment going forward and we're picking up Mr. Gormley. Um, so um, I just wanted to, since we have a change in that subcommittee, um, you know, thank both of my colleagues for um, the last two years of work we did together and, um, you know, and especially Ms. Asak since you'll be going on to some other, oh, you too? I didn't catch that. I didn't see that. All right. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize that. I, th I thought I saw Lisa was still on. Okay. Well, in that case, both of you, thank you, you know, for all the time and effort that you put in. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> I didn't mean to slight you. <laughs> no, no. I, I thought it was only one person changing. Okay. Um, so thank you both because I know we put a lot of time and energy and a lot of hours, um, both in meetings and on our own and emails and just so I, I appreciate everything you both did and I'm lo looking forward to working with both <coughs> Mr. Sullivan and Mr. Gormley yeah. <laughs> going forward. Apparently they've had enough of working with you on that one. I know. Boy, geez, what did I say? It must have been difficult. Huh? I did. Tough enough Think back, There could have been a few is, things I said. Maybe yeah. it is my fault. <laughs> yeah. Tom didn't mention that when he mentioned the new assignments. <laughs> Joyce and Lisa said we're off of that one. <laughs> okay. Mr. Gormley pulled the, the straws. Short straws. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You'd think they'd know what they were getting themselves into by now. I think I served on that one with you, Sully, a million years ago. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, if you're all set with that now, Mr. D'Agostino, we'll accept a, a motion on agenda item C. Great. Motion to approve agenda item C. Um, the December 19th report of the Accounts Review Subcommittee. Note, noting the departure of Joyce and Lisa. <laughs> well, duly noted, okay. Motion has been made and properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Adopted unanimously. Thank you, Mr. D'Agostino. Thank you. So uh, that's most of the business, but I do want to recognize the superintendent for a report on teaching and learning. A brief report. I uh, it is tonight. Mentioned. It is this evening. Um, I first of all want to uh, welcome our student representative, Shama Arace. And before I have her do her report, I want to say how pleased I am that she has made this a priority certainly all fall. She is entering 2018, which is to be her graduation year. Wow. This is very exciting as the seniors you know, enter these last six months, all the wonderful things that will happen for you. But I want to thank you for always making this a priority. Okay, it's all yours. <laughs> okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed your vacation. And I know as the year, um, as the new year starts, our, um, our first semester and our second term ends. So for us, that means, for us as seniors, that means colleges. Deadlines are definitely now. And um, finals are starting to come up, like semifinals. And um, classes like AP, courses and IB courses are starting to um, focus on testing and the tests that are coming up. Over vacation, I know that the basketball team won and um, they won the Rhode Island Relay in, oh, I messed it up. <laughs> okay, so the basketball team did win and then um, the track team won the Rhode Island Relay Invitational. And um, the boys team defeated the BC High. And um, I just wanted to go back to something that I said last week about the ugly Christmas sweaters. It was a great turnout. A lot of people came with very interesting sweaters and even like pins were handed out and it was really fun. Yeah. Can you tell us what some of them look like? <laughs> I know there was unicorns. There were some that lit up. And um, I know there was one with a pug, and he was like all over the city. It was like New York City, and he was like everywhere. It was very funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the basketball team, you mentioned the track team. You know, congratulations to both. 
Um, we're very proud of their accomplishments. I can't wait to get to a basketball game. I hear they're very exciting, and I look forward. Are they usually Tuesday and Friday nights? I think the next home game is the 12th, Tuesday and Friday nights. So that's a, that's a Friday night, the 12th. Yeah. So let's all get out there and, and support our basketball team. Next slide. Is that it? Yep. Okay. It's pretty short. <laughs> Just what we wanted this evening. <laughs> Okay, so um, a couple of things. First of all, I want to congratulate uh, Mayor Carpenter, every one of our school committee members. We're so very pleased to have all of you back and continue the very hard work that's ahead of us for this year. Uh, and to our city councilors, uh, I thought the inauguration went off without a hitch. Um, I know we had a, a new location, Mr. Mayor. I have to tell you, the seats were very comfortable as opposed to the wooden benches. It's a great venue. I mean, I understand the tradition, but it was very comfortable to be able to enjoy um, the ceremony where family members and certainly the public uh, could actually see and be part of uh, that very process. Um, again, it was um, attended by, by a lot of people on, I wasn't so sure how it would be with it being a holiday, but certainly uh, many people came out and people were very pleased. And I think the thing that resonates with me is that people really do care about our city. And I think that bodes well for our students, our families, that there are people willing to give all the time that you give, certainly our city councilors, our mayor, um, and care about the direction that our city is going. And so as a resident, and not just the superintendent of schools, uh, I was very pleased to, to be a part of that last evening, and congratulations to everyone. Thank you, Superintendent. I also want to bring to your attention um, that, uh, of course, um, late Commissioner Mitchell Chester uh, passed away this past June. They have started the process of replacing him. They have about 19 applicants. Um, many are from inside the state. I think they said about a third. And also there are some that previously had been in state but had gone out of state. So they're, they're pleased with what their applicant pool is. They actually hope to have the selection or at least the public interviews by January 22nd. So they're actually moving very quickly. And it is very important for Brockton. You know, the commissioner, you see how Commissioner Chester came out here. There's a lot of dialogue when you talk about cities and the needs of gateway cities. And I want to make sure that um, we are taking part in this as much as we can, sharing with board members. So please pay attention to the process. I know now that they actually, um, they are on a public uh, station. You're able to actually see the board meetings live. So I'll make sure that I get that information out to you. It is very interesting for you to hear the questions that they're asking the next commissioner who will lead not only the, the direction of our public school districts, but also talking about you know, our new testing, you know, talking about technology coming in, you know, talking about our, our equity in education that we continue to talk about. So these are uh, important measures for us to listen to. And I want to uh, invite uh, Sharon Wolder to come up, Executive Director, or excuse me, Chief Officer uh, of Student Support Services, Sharon Wolder. And we have our public forum uh, coming up, our parent forum, coming up on January 24th, 2018. Um, it is, I believe, a Wednesday evening. We do have a weather date or snow date or whatever we want to call it of January 25th, the Thursday evening. So the date is the 24th. We're very pleased today that we actually have our new web content manager got our questions right up on the website. We sent out today a connected message to parents and also a text message, which I had to stay under 300 characters. So, so hopefully that went out. And you know, if you can start to share that with your constituents if you're getting phone calls, the idea is we want as many parents as possible to fill out these eight questions on the survey about you know, bullying, um, about student discipline, a number of areas that you have heard a lot of concern. So this is an opportunity for our parents to not only be involved in a parent forum, but uh, Sharon Walder is going to be working with volunteers and they will be parents to actually lead this forum. So we will have a World Cafe. Sharon spent quite a bit of time putting together kind of a script. We're going to be um, training the parents that are going to come forward. We've already started to ask principals, if you're out at the PAC meetings, please start to bring this up and talk about it. That parents will be trained on the 11th of January to conduct those forums for the public on the 24th. So this is the first of its kind since I've been here that we're not only asking you know, parent opinions and a very wide survey that's out there for everybody in the district. 
They can also choose, and Sharon will show you as we go through this, um, an opportunity to give us their email address if they choose at the end. They can be anonymous or they can share this information and we'll get back to them on um, future information uh, about this forum. So let me step to the side and you can see these questions on the website. Currently 336 people have responded to the survey wow. since the call went out and 88 of them have indicated that they will attend the forum. Uh, and so basically it's, it pops up when you go onto the Brockton Public Schools website. It's on there um, and it asks people to complete the survey before they actually access the website. Uh, and it, it's a very simple uh, survey and it's translated into Portuguese, French and Spanish as well. Uh, and it asks questions about their children and what schools they attend, if bullying, if they believe it's an issue. Uh, concerns that they have about social media, discipline policy and its enforcement, uh, questions about the dress code with access to the dress code policies uh, at the middle and high school level, and the cell phone policy with those uh, policies also accessible before they answer the questions. Uh, and then the last question is, are they interested in uh, participating in the forum? And now we're up to 339. So the call went out, people are responding, uh, and we're up to 89 people who said they would attend the forum. So it's gonna be, we might need two cafeterias. So. Very good, a any questions or, I mean, we did this, uh, again, this is our district capacity project with the Brockton Education Association, with our school committee, and with our administration. So this is a project similar to um, our um, dual language programs that we've had in the district, um, where we're starting to work together on looking at our uh, code of conduct. Uh, we see this not as just a year, this is something that will be ongoing. We're very excited about getting you know, parents' thoughts. I think the more buy-in that we have from people in the community, the easier it is when we come together with any changes in our policy to have support of our parents in the community. So we're encouraging everybody to, you know, certainly take that survey, and if you can put aside that night, I think that will uh, be important, and it gives parents a chance not only to have a voice, but to have an actionable voice. And these is why I think the issues that you bring forward are issues that are um, important to parents and timely right now as we figure out how we deal with social media and bullying um, and some of the topics that you mentioned that, that um, it, we're trying to come up with, uh, with policies that will have the support of the families but also make sense to the school administrators at the, at the same time. So I think that if parents want to have some input in it, this is their opportunity to have input that uh, the school administration is reaching out and allowing parents to voice some opinions and have some say in. The, the policies that we do develop. And, and uh, I think these are issues that public schools across the country are right. challenged with today. So it's important for folks to complete the survey and hopefully be able to participate in the forum. I think this is very progressive. I think it allows us to um, you know, start to take a look at getting more parents involved. And we just talked about community schools or PACs or you know, really start to, to encourage them to be part of the educational process in a meaningful way. Okay. Mr. Sullivan. One question, Sharon. Could you give the time and the place of this forum? The forum is on the 24th in the Red Cafeteria here at Brockton High School, and it starts at 6 o'clock. It goes from 6 to 7.30. Okay, thank you. And we want to make sure that although we're having it, of course, our, at our large high school, um, it is a concerning all the district. This is not just a high school issue, elementary, middle, and high school. So we want to make that clear that it involves all parents at every level. Okay, great, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Sharon. Um, we've, of course, talked and met, and I know you had them at the City Hall uh, just last week, our state championship uh, soccer team. I just want to bring to everybody's attention that there is going to be a gala, a team gala on Saturday, February 3rd at Massasoit Conference Center, and they are looking for sponsorships for the gala. I know you can uh, contact uh, Moises Rodriguez, uh, Dr. Soraya DeBarros, and Louis Lopes um, if you would like to uh, sponsor uh, this uh, wonderful event coming up. 
So I believe it is a Saturday evening, and uh, it's a nice way to certainly honor our soccer team. Good. And yeah, it's um, Saturday, February 3rd at Massasoit Conference Center. I also want to remind, I'm sorry? I, I don't have a, a time yet. Um, I'm sure invitations will be coming out to us, but it is a Saturday evening. <laughs> I can be whenever they want it. I'll be. I can be there. <laughs> I also want to uh, let the school committee know that we now begin our testing season, and I do call it a season. We begin with our we to access te testing for our bilingual students. That runs a, a couple of months. Um, it, it's very labor intensive for both our teachers and our students. It gives us lots of information and decisions to be made about our students, and then we very quickly go into our MCAS 2.0 testing. So the, this is our testing window. Uh, also, our uh, retreat, we're presently putting together the agenda. And once again, I'm going to ask, please get us any items that you want on that retreat agenda for the 27th of uh, January. I have on there goals for the school committee, which our executive team is discussing and putting together. Uh, I would like input you know, from you if there are things you want to give us ahead of time, or obviously we can discuss uh, that day. But I would like to be able to walk away having those goals set. Um, we're also going to be talking about curriculum. That is our focus going into this new year. We've been working at every level, looking at the baseline um, testing results that we got this past fall, knowing that there are some concerns, concerns about our focus, concerns about curriculum, concerns about technology for our students. So that will be the focus of that meeting and ongoing. Those will be the presentations uh, as we go into the new year with our school committee. Uh, also, we certainly will talk about our budget for FY19. Uh, Mr. Petronio reminded me that the governor should start to have some numbers um, as far as the, the state budget at that time. Um, and also, just to remind everybody again, uh, today we are again in contact with Stonehill College. Wanda has been talking to the administration there. We're trying to come up with a couple of dates for our equity and education meeting. And what we're looking to do is actually invite uh, former Secretary of Education Paul Revel, who was part of the original um, Ed Reform Act that certainly brought about foundation formula, et cetera. He has some very interesting insight as to what the grand bargain was as we talk about going forward. We're also looking uh, with Sarah uh, Catignani Spada for our attorney, reaching out to other attorneys. So we are trying to get a couple of dates because we want as many people there as possible. I have urban districts you know, uh, emailing me all the time looking for this date. So it is not just Brockton looking to move forward. So I am very hopeful that we will have a good showing of political leaders, of people from other communities willing to, to have this discussion and to hopefully come away with at least some action plans or some, <clears throat> or some next steps. So we'll get back to you with those dates as quickly as possible. Just <clears throat> wondering, and I know you're guesstimating obviously, Realistically, how close do we think we are to actually filing this action? You know, we, we had hoped to have it done probably by now. We yeah. have brought parents together, and we do have parents that after the meeting that we had in November that mm -hmm. are interested in having their child named as a plaintiff in the lawsuit. Um, there weren't many families, but there probably were about five or six. Yeah. I think we got another name after that, so I'm very confident that as Brockton goes, we will have a lead plaintiff. Um, we definitely want, and you'll hear that conversation at the meeting at Stonehill, you don't want to be the lone group out there. When you look back in the 1980s into the 90s, it was five districts, and they strategically did not just have all gateway cities. Right. You will have gateway cities interested, but they had rural um, towns, they had suburban towns, so it was an effort. So what matters to us and it certainly does when we look at our funding uh, problem here in Brockton, a broken system. But it also matters to some you know, of the communities that are very rural, and believe it or not, some of the suburban communities. There are those outliers um, that are in a very different situation than certainly most of the gateway cities. But we do want to have, you know, the lawyers are telling us that that is the way to go. So I think, I certainly feel good about where we're at in this, mm -hmm. meaning we're, you know, we're talking to Stonehill, we're moving forward, we hope to have this meeting within the next three or four weeks, um, and I think we can probably have a better idea after that meeting, Mr. D'Agostino. Great, thank you. Okay.
Okay, and uh, I want to um, remind everybody that we are part of what they call uh, um, an Excel network, which is social and emotional learning. Nine communities were picked. They're working with the Rennie Center. Brockton was one of those nine communities. Many of them are gateway cities. There are some suburban areas also. And Dr. Tarasi is our representative uh, on this Excel committee. And right now we're working on a plan in our district, an action plan for this year, to talk about what it means to have social and emotional learning really weaved through each part in each level. And while we're very pleased with some of the things we're doing at our elementary level, we're looking to bring that into our middle school and our high school. And I feel very good about the overarching plan that Brockton, and we, we have some great uh, things happening in our district in every one of our elementary schools, and certainly in our middle and high school. But to look at an overall district plan as to how we're dealing with trauma-sensitive schools, dealing with the issues that come really in our doorways each and every day. So Dr. Tarasi is doing excellent work on that. I will have him at some point update us as this action plan um, unfolds. I also have good news that, um, and the mayor and I were just talking, and I'd love to be able to tell you, you know, million dollar grants are coming in. They're not necessarily, but we do have some grants of smaller amounts. We just received a grant that the bilingual office um, applied for. $25,000 from Silicon Valley Community Foundation. It'll be used for computers and iPads and for, for paraprofessional support for our bilingual students. And as I said, although it seems small, every little bit helps. And I thank all those departments that are working together you know, to secure this funding. Um, and I wanna finish off with a couple of things. One is, when I was here last, we added four in-service days to the Brockton High calendar. I know we had talked about a January 10th date because of the WIDA access testing. We're actually having that on January 9th. So I know parents have been alerted at this point. It's just coming up very quickly. It's next Tuesday. So there will be that first additional in-service day um, at the high school for professional development for our staff. Uh, and to finish up, um, I do want to mention, and I had a call this evening from the enterprise about these frigid, cold, temperatures and what our schools are experiencing. Remember, many of our schools, uh, unfortunately, we have some schools, meaning the Huntington, that's over 100 years old. You have your middle schools that are 60 years old. So in some, I think even older than that. So we did have pockets of some issues today. You know, I talked to Deputy Superintendent Thomas um, before the weekend even started. I wanna thank for a student for working very closely with us and making sure those buses were started, having the mechanics out there. Yes, there were some issues, but right away they were able to send out buses to do double runs. They were picking up students if they saw students, and I'm just gonna use Forest Ave as an example. You know, kids walking up, if they had room on a bus, they put those kids on the bus and got them to school. Today was, I mean, we know the temps and we know what the predictions are. I will tell you at West Middle School, uh, I just was there with Deputy Superintendent Thomas uh, and Ken Thompson before I came to this meeting here. We have uh, some areas, when you talk about those old venting systems, so we're in there this evening, we've got people cleaning out the venting system to make sure that they're at full capacity. There were some rooms that were at 68 degrees, there were a couple that were lower, uh, some 61, 62 degrees. We're hoping those temperatures will come up. Uh, pres uh, excuse me. Principal uh, Colin Campbell will be sending out a connected message to parents this evening, talking about making sure kids are, are in layers. So you have a sweatshirt, you know, you have your jacket. Um, I felt that you know the educational process could still take place. And quite honestly, we need the students in school. We know what the winters are like around here and the impending weather that I'll talk about in a second. So I want to ask the parent cooperation to please make sure you send your children, uh, obviously dress for the weather when it's outside, but also just to get through this really cold snap. And thank goodness, I think tomorrow is predicted at least for one or two days uh, of about 30 degree temperatures. Um, we did have some issues at the Huntington School. I know, I believe that's been corrected at this point. Um, you know, we, we had a, a pipe in here, you know, leaking in the little theater that we're in, and that was, you know, fixed before we came in here this evening. So these, it wasn't fixed? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, the one over there was fixed. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> I apologize. Again, we're doing the very, very best we can, and I really want to thank everybody. Never mind all our 
uh, maintenance men or custodians. I mean, people are just doing yeoman's work to make sure the kids can come to school. Um, I think it's the best place for them. It's where the educational process takes place. Uh, our children are, are fed and they're in a, a safe environment and we assure parents we're doing the very best we can, so please work with us on this. If I can just add so sure. people have to put it in perspective, this is the longest stretch of sub-20 degree weather in 100 years. I mean, this is historical uh, extended extreme cold, so everything is under strain. Uh, we had the boiler go out at the War Memorial Building today, and we're working that as, uh, as we speak. So, so some of the buildings and facilities are older, and they're really being placed under a tremendous strain right now with this just, we, we get these temperatures, but we've never had them for seven days in a row like we've had in this stretch. And after, after the snowstorm, uh, we're looking at several more days of temperatures even colder than what we've got right now. So this is gonna be an ongoing concern, and uh, you know we're responding to everything on a daily basis as best we possibly can. And, and we do, I think I joined the superintendent believing that um, you know, our school facilities are the safest place for the children during the day, despite whatever little glitches we're running into mm -hmm. in terms of maintenance. So uh, we'll get through a snowstorm and we'll get through some more cold and we'll continue to respond uh, to any issues that arise. So Mayor, of course you bring up, here we are today is Tuesday, January 2nd, and we are already looking at uh, Thursday, January 4th with the Nor'easter coming in. I will tell you I'm always pleased, not about the snow, but we do work as a team. I always talk about our Brockton Emergency Management. Uh, we work with the mayor's office, with our DPW that are fantastic. And it's not just one person sitting there making decisions. It's a group decision. Everybody comes together. We get all kinds of information before decisions are made. So again, we will you know, un yeah. unfortunately have to deal with weather a little bit sooner than I, I wanted to deal with uh, we, it. We, we will make, uh, for folks to see this on TV Wednesday, um, we're gonna make every effort to be able to make an announcement Wednesday evening with regards to the plans for Thursday so that people have time to adjust accordingly. And Mayor, that is my report for, uh, for this evening. Okay, great, thank you. I just have a couple small items to, to add. Uh, another piece of routine organizational business is that any old business that we had that we were working on at the end of December that was not completed ends and the slate is wiped clean we begin a new session so I do have a few items that the superintendent has made me aware of to read into the record to put these items back on the table for us to be able to work on again but also if there are any other items that I'm missing here that uh, members of the committee want to add to subcommittee agendas we can do that so under the policy subcommittee uh, we are looking at uh, registration policy, and we're also looking at cell phone policy. So we'll put those items back onto the agenda. Uh, on the policy manual review, we'll put back on the agenda the update of the policy manual. The superintendent contract committee is uh, working with the superintendent on uh, the superintendent's setting her goals, and we'll put that back on. Uh, under facilities, we have the ongoing work of the master plan, so the facilities master plan goes back on uh, so that we can continue to work on that. And under the building naming uh, subcommittee, we have Champion Park and the high school basketball court, gymnasium basketball court, are items that are currently sitting on that agenda for future consideration. So those are the ones that I've just put back on the record uh, is there anything else that any other school committee member believes that we were working on but was left unfinished and would like to revive for the new session? You always have the option to file anything at any point going forward, just like we do at every meeting for items to be referred to subcommittees. Those are the ones that we're aware of right now. Okay? All right, those are in the record. Now, I just want to add a quick comment with the superintendents also. She referenced the, uh, the bilingual grant that was received. Uh, this is another grant that's not a big one, but I think really important and uh, was something that city side and school side were able to collaborate on. So the, we received a notice from the superintendent in this week's packet about the Bill Belichick Foundation 
awarding a $10,000 grant for our um, growing lacrosse program. And uh, Dr. Murray, I know lacrosse is something that's been very important to you. Um, but now that we have the new citywide grants coordinator working out of City Hall, a big part of what he's doing is not necessarily writing everyone's grants for them, but doing the research piece to help with identifying grant opportunities and getting various city departments along with many of our other nonprofit partners in the city to be more collaborative in terms of sharing opportunities. We may, uh, you know, one, one partner may discover something in their research, not a good fit for them, that we now have a mechanism through the coordinator to share it with others. So that particular one, Paul Umano had discovered that opportunity, sent it over to the school department, the school school department was able to take it and run with it, and it, it resulted in a $10,000 grant um, for our lacrosse program that quite honestly in these budgetary times we're living in is not money we would have been able to appropriate for that purpose, but that money was received. So uh, not a huge amount of money, but I think it it's important, particularly to those that would like to see us play lacrosse, um, but beyond that to just show that this is the, the model that we're building for sharing resources and sharing research and sharing data so that we can all bring more grant money into the city. So I appreciate the school department taking that opportunity and running with it and writing a successful grant application. I thought, so, so people that are Patriots fans, we looked this up. So the Bill Belichick Foundation, the purpose of the nonprofit is to provide coaching, mentorship, and financial assistance to communities that focus on the sports of football and lacrosse. So many people don't realize that Belichick's other passion in sports is lacrosse. I think he actually coached lacrosse at a young age. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, I just think that's, I found that kind of interesting. There's more to him than just winning Super Bowls. But we appreciate the grant. So that's what I've got, uh, new business. Anyone else uh, have anything under new business? Hearing no new business, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion's been made, properly seconded. <laughs> Meeting adjourned, thank you very much everyone. Looking forward to a great new year with you all.